stuffed shells. So, your first step, obviously, is to cook the shells. I personally use these. Uh, you know, you can use whatever you want. You can even use manicotti. It just, it depends on what you want. You know, there's even a, um, a recipe on the back. I wonder what the recipe calls for. Ricotta, oh, they call for mars mascarpone cheese. I've never done mascarpone. It's uh, some kind of maf mafia cheese. Anyway, so cook your shells and uh, I don't cook them to the point where they're like done done. I cook them, I guess you call it al dente. I am no chef. And honestly, this is not complicated. <laughs> so, um, and you can modify this any way you want. You can look up a, a recipe or whatever. I'm just simply showing you how I do them. So I've already cooked my noodles. So I already have those, they're down here. Um, I did rinse them off a little bit, but not a lot because once you rinse the noodles off, it takes away the starch and the starch is what <coughs> sucks in the sauce. So that it makes them tastier if you don't rinse them too much. Just FYI. Okay, so I use ricotta. I got this. You can use any brand you want. You can use, you know, the full, I got the whole milk, but they have like 2%, they have like skim, they have different kinds. The only reason I got the Galvani was because it was on sale. <laughs> so it's originally $8.99, I only paid $3.99. And when you're making a ton of stuffed shells, you gotta go cheap, at least I do. Now. I would actually prefer to make stuffed shells with like higher end cheeses, like better mozzarellas and better parmesans and like great my own and do all that. But I always make this in bulk because we take it to the neighbor's house and then we also freeze it. So I go low cost on the cheese, but the cheeses that I got are good too. So it's not that, that big of a deal. So I'm actually using two of them and I've done, I think it's almost three boxes of shells. And I have four pans. I got these from the Dollar Tree, two for a dollar. I like to get these because cleanup's easy. You can just throw it in the trash. So one, you can save your containers for use for later if you'd like. I just recycle them. two like I said I'm making a lot so <coughs> that's why I'm using two big ones um, eggs I'm putting four in because like I said I'm basically doubling it you know if you want like legit measurements I suggest looking up a recipe because I don't, I don't follow measurements with this. At least I think I might have like back when I first made them, like the very first time I made them. But after that, I just kind of winged it. And every single time, they're just a little bit different. Equally as yummy, but just a little bit different. And like I said, I've exper experimented with different cheeses, higher end cheeses. You know, like they make those mo little mozzarella balls in the olive oil and Italian seasonings. Those are amazing on it, but I can't afford those for a big batch. So, four eggs. And then I go ahead and mix that up a while. So you're, uh, I mix the ricotta up with the eggs. Kind of goopy, but satisfying at the same time. Um, the eggs are basically just a blinder, I guess. Kind of fluffs it up, and makes it a blinder. I like cheese. I like a lot of cheese. And I don't think I've ever had a cheese I didn't like. <laughs> There's lots of cheeses I haven't tried. I've never had a cheese I didn't like. 
I'm not a fan of just eating ricotta out of a container. And I've actually made like sweet ricottas before. Like you can take ricotta and mix it with like sugar and cocoa and I'm not a fan of that either because of the texture. I'd rather just do rice bread. So I mix that up. You can absolutely not see that. Mix that good. up. So what? So it's all good. Well, they saw it once I tapped the screen. The whole lighting thing. Um, seasonings. I do that, that next because it's easier to mix the seasonings into the ricotta than it is to mix the seasonings in with the mozzarella and the parmesan added. Just FYI. So do that step next. I add a combination of Italian seasonings. Now, I actually have um, the organics. Italian seasoning, Italian blend seasoning. You can use any. This just basically has um, oregano, basil, the the marjoram. I guess that's how you say it. But sage, garlic. Um, not a lot of it, but it has all that in. So I sprinkle some of that in, and I do a little bit of extra just of the oregano. Can't get wrong with oregano. Yeah, and I use um, the organic. Uh, parsley, parsley, and again, I don't measure it. I would say a tablespoon of each with this recipe, maybe a teaspoon for a single bit. I don't know. <laughs> so just do it till you think it looks good. And then I have this is garlic, and this has parsley in it too. I borrowed this from the neighbor because I didn't have any, so. We're just going to sprinkle a little bit because not everybody likes garlic. So I'm going to mix that up. I feel like it needs a little bit more. Add a little bit more. Oops, sorry, Jess. People getting stepped on. <coughs> and I also add more to the... Um, to the uh, top of it once it's done. This is a lot, so. And I'm not done adding stuff to it yet. Okay, so that's all mixed in. Next, I add mozzarella. It's a really big bag. So I like cheese. I can't stress that enough. I, it's just the low moisture part skin mozzarella cheese. This is the only big bags that we sell at our store. And it's actually a pretty decent mozzarella. You know, if I could get the higher end stuff, but it's $9 a bag just for this. So that puts it into perspective. But we're gonna get probably four or five deals out of this maybe. And I'm probably gonna add at least half this bag of cheese to that. that in okay. and you can tell by looking at it like that's a little runny yet so add some more because you don't want it like runny runny because you got to stuff this stuff inside a shell <laughs> so you want it kind of kind of thick I'm sure he'll add some good music behind this, right? <laughs> and then I use, you can use just Parmesan, you can use whatever, but I like the Parmesan Romano blend. And again, this is Lucerne, whatever's on sale, two for three. I was two for six, three dollars bag. So I'm probably gonna put the whole bag of this in. Uh, I like cheese. <laughs> that in.
And that's probably, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good consistency. Because you figure once the egg cooks too, it's going to fluff up a bit. So that's done. That's the mixture. That's it. That's it, guys. Mozzarella, ricotta. I use the Parmesan Romano. Again, you can just use Parmesan. You can just use Romano. You don't have to use it at all. And the seasonings that you want to add to it. That's it. So, we're going to put that aside. And we're going to grab a pan. And let's do this. Right there. And then, sauce. Now, use whatever sauce that you like. Like if you like Prego, use Prego. You like Ragu, you use Ragu. You want to make your own sauce, have a blast. We love Francisco Rinaldi. That's what we use. Now, I've never used the meat flavored. So I have that and I have the sausage flavored. I've never used these. So I don't know what this is going to turn out to be like. Again, like I said, I, I change it every time. So this is my difference this time is the sauce is the flavor of sauce usually I just use the original but we didn't have the original so I couldn't get the original this is our original up in the cupboard is it yeah I looked yeah, okay. but um <coughs> usually we just use the like I said we just use the original Francisco Rinaldi but they didn't have it they had this they had a garden blend and they had um the, some sweet basil or something the signature select brand's not too bad either yeah the signature well yeah, that's Safeway yeah. the Safeway brand stuff's pretty good too but this is our go-to and I was like you know might be a little nice to kind of have the the sausage or the meat flavor added to it so I'm going to combine the two so we're going to start out with our pan again I highly suggest just getting the disposable ones they're two for dollar to dollar tree guys um and just pour a little bit on the bottom so I'm just going to pour a little bit of each Mix them up a little bit. That one's kind of, the sausage one's kind of chunky. The, uh, the other one's not. And then I just take a spatula and I spread it on the bottom of the pan. It doesn't have to be a lot. It smells good. You just basically are covering the bottom of the pan with sauce. I'm actually gonna just I think, do it this way. <coughs> like that. Okay. And then you're gonna stuff your shells. So you're gonna take a shell. Now I wash my hands before all this. So make sure you wash your hands before you do it. Or wear gloves. This is all for family, so I'm not worried about it. Take your shell. Take a teaspoon, or what they consider a teaspoon size, plop that stuff in the shell, fill the shell. If it needs a little more, get a little more. You want it to be full, but you want to be able to close it up a little bit. Mine tend to kind of seep out a little bit, but that's okay. And then you'll line them in the pan. So let's do that. So we've got all the shells stuffed and um, when you put them in the pan, do a single layer. They cook better if you do a single layer um, and they don't take quite as long. Now I took the two sauces that I had and I mixed them together. So now we're just going to, if I get this to not be so, there we go. Just spread some sauce over the top. I 
I also, if you have kids that don't like stuffed shells, I'll take some of the extra shells that I have left over because I always have some left over. And I'll just put sauce and some mozzarella cheese on top and bake that with it. That way it's more like just a spaghetti instead of the stuffed shells. So spread some sauce over top like so. And then your cheese. I put a good bit of cheese on mine, guys. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go be for real here. So, I cover the top with cheese. I like cheese. So, we do the mozzarella. And then. I just sprinkle that on top. And then I take the Italian seasoning, or you can do your mix or whatever, and I sprinkle that on top. And that's it. We're done. So, we're going to cover it with foil. And at this point, if you're not cooking it today, you can go ahead and put it in the freezer. I don't know. They last for a while. I don't, they only relax a couple weeks before we get them out and cook them, but you put them in the freezer like that, or go ahead and bake them, and you're going to bake it at 400 for, for about 45 minutes to an hour, give or take. You check it, I check it after the half hour mark and see where you're at, temp the in, inside of it, and then, because remember, there's raw eggs in there, and then keep going as you're going. Um, about 15 minutes before it's done, I like to take the top off to kind of make that cheese on top kind of crusty. So we're going to go ahead and do that and we'll be back after it's baked. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far and that's at 45 minutes, 400. So I'm going to put them back in probably about 15 more minutes with the foil off. So that the cheese can get kind of browned. So let's do that. Okay, that's it. It's done. They have two pans. So 400, I think I put it in, I guess total is in for about an hour. These pans aren't the sturdiest, so just be careful with them if you go from the Dollar Tree. But yeah. Looks like a winner. Winner, winner, stuff shelter. <laughs>